Hello YouTube, this is Alexander again. As you guess, those multimeters have become notorious on internet to people who love measuring instruments with a nice performance and a very little price. They are almost perfect, except one thing that makes sense. Despite the accuracy of this multimeter, the ergonomic which I found not half bad, they have atrocious fuse. Despite the size, they are rated for the main but calibrated for their own limitation current. That's a little bit ridiculous. Because I have no fuse holder on my bench, I need to recover it from scrap parts. Those twins are okay, but oxidation will make it impossible to solder. Those ones are shiny and have a perfect toll, which can be decreased for a concern of minimal housing. They are nice, but not with that. That's forbidden. Be patient and use a classical soldering iron, like this one, and change the tip for a better heat transfer. Here I just forget to raise the heat. This is why I'm struggling. Did you say stupid? Here it is. This is the first and you need four of them, like here. The PCB of the 8002 is not the same than the 8008. The fuse modification on the 8002 is easy, when on the 8008 it will be very difficult, even not possible. There is not too much place, but by cheating a little bit, it's easily possible to make the modification. This meter will be perfect if not this fuse. Look how tiny it is. You usually found this kind of fuse directly soldered to a PCB on cheap power supply, phone charger or light bulb. They are not easy to find and impossible to find on an industrial surrounding or even your bench. So, without forgetting to switch on the iron, Yes, because I removed the shot where I tried to desoldering the fuse holder with a cold iron. You can remove the fuse holder one by one using a plier for wiggling it because it's checked on the epoxy hole. Now you have it. You need to unbend it for to make it flat. You will win some place on the height and it will be more sturdy. For the first, you need uh, to remove the excess parts because you will not always need it. Of course, for a better result, it's better if you tin it before, for good soldering by heat transfer. I forget to scratch the green mask. Have you say stupid? Okay, despite of it, the fuse holder seems to be sturdy. Researching the fuse like I do permits to you to trace a limit for a cut in the ground plan. As you see, you need to cut the mass plane like I do for to create a support for the fuse holder. This is what I call cheating a little bit. For to know where to cut, just put the fuse and cut underneath or just cut beside the leg of the resistor. And of course, don't forget to ensure the discontinuity of the two parts. You see easily why cutting the excess of fuse holder can help, or when sometimes you need to keep it for to ensure the connection with the copper track on the other side. You can use the fuse like that to make it in place, soldering it while it's holded by the fuse.
testing the good quality of soldering. It seems to be correct. And let's go to the other side. Scratching again the green mask is pro module to make a good area of soldering. Tightening and soldering. More easy to say than to do. It's a really pain to do it front of camera on the fly. Tightening again. Fuse holding on the fuse holder and soldering correctly by heat transfer. As you see, the solder went between the PCB and the fuse holder. This is okay. The strength of soldering seems to be okay after thoroughly testing it. On the 8008 model, it's not easy to replace the fuse because the body of the new fuse will cross the path on the PCB and you need to reconnect the other side of the old fuse to the new one with a wire. Ethically, to make those modifications make it really unsafe. In this way, the jod on the PCB is too much eccentric and will disturb the fuse holder laying. And the track pad is too thin, unlikely able to hold a fuse holder. This one seems to be nice with the new one, seems more professional. It will return to my bag for new chop shotting adventures. The red one will stay on my bench for helping me to have a quick multimeter at hand. I love this mod, almost impossible to do on this one. The red one will stay on my bench for helping me to have a quick multimeter at hand. And of course, testing voltage are ok, milliamps read are ok. Fluctuating current is ok. And the 10 amps works. Ready for a new life on several years. It was Alexander again. See you soon.